So one thing we were missing on two of the components uh, were the icons. So we have here on our services teaser, and basically uh, this is the website that we are trying to recreate. So this is the static website that we are getting, let's say, from our front-end developers. And um, yeah, we need to recreate basically uh, the icons being displayed with this shape around that that uh, switches the color on hover and the same we have for the features teaser so currently we only display um, the text here but uh, we also want to display the icons now if we take a look um, how those are built let's start with those ones here um, just back that we can see that um, we have here um, a class for the icon itself. We have a class for the color, and then we have additionally for the shape an SVG. So, and we can see that the whole thing is basically coming from, uh, it's not showing it here, maybe here on the SVG, no, as well not. So we will see that later. Um, if we inspect the, um, icon on the feature teaser we see that it's slightly handled different so on the one hand again we have a class here uh, representing the icon itself and then we pass the color using a hex code uh, as a style information so um, yeah let's switch into our visual studio code solution so this is a service teaser that we have right now and we can see here again uh, that we have the icon we have um, the class representing the color and we have our SVG uh, statically currently here. So uh, all the time we're using it, it's displaying the same or as there is some, uh, some vendor based uh, CSS and fonts and all that stuff missing currently, it's not, not displaying the icons. Uh, we can also see that in our current solution. So if I go on that page, you can see there is already the shape and it's uh, displayed in some color already. Um, but here the icons are missing and here the icons are missing as well. Now we have prepared um, already a little bit because this is bound to a lot of templating and data creation. And I, I think this is not really uh, a rocket science, but uh, that's why we created it up front. So taking a look at the templates, uh, for the services teaser uh, we can start with. So what we've created here in the templates area under the services teaser, we've created um, a folder for all the templates regarding the icons, not to mess up the whole folder here and have it a, a little bit structured. So um, as for the services, we have on the one hand um, the icon box background, which con uh, consists of a display name and then the SVG code that we want to uh, we want to pass, so this will be a multi-line text field. Again, this will be in a certain uh, folder, so that's why we created a folder template here. And then for the color itself, we have again some kind of display name, and then the class name that we want to pass in our um, in the Scriven template. Now, again, a folder for that, and then the icon itself, um, which is um, represented with a name again, and then the class name that is used. Now, as the teasering information comes from the service detail page, as you remember, uh, we created a base template here, teaser information, which on the one hand contains the data for the teasering, but then also the appearance. Um, so in here, we, we later on can uh, um, select the icon via a drop link, and we have set here already the location where to find it. So uh, we can um, select the icon, the color and the background from the data that we set up. The same we basically did for the feature teaser. So the feature teaser we have created under basic components, and then we have here a feature teaser icon folder containing all our templates. So we have the, the color. In this case, uh, it was represented with a hex code, if you remember. Um, the remix colors is the folder for it. Um, by the way, the folders always contain the standard values. Um, also, the others contain standard values. Um, so the color contains the standard value to set um, the color, preset the color with a with an item name. And then uh, we have the insert options on the standard values for the folders. Then we have the 
the remix icon, sorry, which consists then of a class name and the icon name. So we've inherited this uh, teaser template. Where was it? Uh, services. Uh, this this template we inherited to the page template, which is to be found under project and services detail. So here you can see that the teaser information template is uh, is attached or is a base template of our service detail page. Now having a look at the site itself. So uh, this was already there, uh, or I, I think I created some more service detail pages, but if we go for the teasering uh, somewhere here at the bottom. So here we have the teaser appearance and you can see you can select from certain icons and a certain color that is already preset and a certain background. So I, I wasn't sure how to name them, so that's why I just named them background one to background six. Um, now to set up this data that you need to um, yeah, to 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 set up this information for the for the appearance, uh, you basically have two options. The one option is to um, put this into uh, inside your site. So this way, you have on the one hand the ability to, uh, if you have a shared site, you can share this information into the other sites. Of course, this way you have it centrally managed at least for your tenant. Um, you can also set it up for your site directly if you want to have this really uh, differing per site, um, or you can have it centrally managed for your whole solution. And this is the, the way that we decided for. So that's why we placed the whole data that is taken, uh, that is shown here, or that can be selected here into our module. So let's take a look into system settings, and then it's feature. SXA tutorial. So under services, we have the icon box folder containing the folders for backgrounds, colors, and icons. And basically here we created all the different background uh, data sources so with the SVG code here and a display name. Um, same for the colors with the name and the class name that represents the color and then for the icons as well. And for the other icon set that we use for the for the feature test uh, for the feature component, we find that under basic components because it belongs to the feature the, the feature component belongs to the module of basic components, and there we have then uh, our remix colors because this uh, icon library that we are using uh, is called remix icons I think so we have a folder remix colors and then all the different colors created so the name and the hex value and then later on. Also the icons itself represented by an icon name and a class name. So as we didn't want to bore you with creating all this data and all these templates, I think this is on the one hand shown in other tutorials uh, that we created before. And um, yeah, so that should be fine so far. Now what we want to do next is, um, what we do <laughs> want to do next is, um, let me see, set up the base theme. So we have, um, let me bring this up, CSS, yes. So for our company website, and here we have an export got from our uh, front end department. So here on the assets, we find basically a folder for, uh, called vendor. And in here, we find all the information for the different icon sets. So we have um, our remix icons, which consists of a CSS file and then certain font files and an SVG. And we have um, a folder for the box icons, uh, which is a little bit separated into a CSS files that you can see here, and then also the font files. So one thing to mention before we actually create and upload uh, and, and set up everything for the base theme that we are going to use for all these uh, files, um, you can see that um, we renamed the files already. So usually it would be boxicons.ttf or boxicons.woff and so on. Um, if as we're using media libraries to store those files, um, media library strips off the, the file ending and then the item name is um, 
yeah, named after the part before. So they would have or that they would require to have all the same item names, which uh, will not work in Sidecore Media Library or I think in, not in Sidecore at all. So that's why we renamed those um, to have the file ending as part of the file name just to differentiate the files um, as such. And um, to make this work, uh, we also had to check and adjust the um, CSS file. So as you can see, um, before it was uh, font slash box icons dot EOT, and we ended added now here um, the file endings just to configure it in the right way so that they're also found afterwards once we uploaded um, once we uploaded all the files into media library to our base theme. So that's what we did so far. Um, yeah, now let's actually create a base theme. So under media library base themes, uh, we create a new base theme and we call it icons. So now this is also something that you need to, need to decide at a certain point. Um, if you want to be able to, um, to add each icon library independently, so the remix icons independently from, um, from the box icons to your site or to the site theme, uh, then you should create two base themes. Um, in our case, we just add them together. So that's why we can just create one base theme containing uh, both libraries at the end. Um, yeah, but if you need to separate them, uh, you can have two base themes. So the first thing we do is we create a styles folder and just name it styles. We also need another media folder called, um, I think, fonts. And we need a media folder called image. And now we upload the files. So starting with the style sheets and we use the advanced options. So uh, we don't need to upload the minified file for now. So I'm just uploading. Oops, I don't think it's going to work like that, but at least it works like that. Box icons. Transformation. Upload. Here we go. And I think the other library is also requiring some CSS. So let's have a look in the remix icons. Yes, we have the CSS. Else, that should be fine. Let's upload this one. OK. Then we store the SVGs in the image uh, folder. So SVG goes here. I'm not sure if we need this guy. Let's put it here. Um, fine. Switching the vendor again to the box icons. And I think it was under fonts. Yes, right. There we go. Upload. Close. And last but not least, all the fonts. Again, advanced upload. Fonts. EOT. I just see that we haven't uh, renamed the EOT, so we might need to double check the CSS file if that is uh, correct. And now we can also upload the fonts from the remix icons. So that would be this guy, this guy. And this guy. Close. So this way we created now our base theme and we're going to attach the base theme to the site theme. So um, maybe one additional um, thing. So if you need to constantly work on your base theme, you also probably want to handle it along with the SXA CLI so that you can synchronize that theme. Um, 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 also from from your local uh, Visual Studio Code uh, solution. 
Um, so that's also possible. The only thing that you have to do is to change the. Uh, where is it? Uh, I think it's under here. The server config.json. So this is basically the path and the theme name where your whole solution or your whole theme is synchronizing to. So if you have a base theme that you want to synchronize, then in the server config.json of your theme, in this case base theme, you just need to uh, change the path. And this way you could also work constantly uh, with your base themes. But as we are just copying um, some static vendor based stuff, that should be enough. So one thing uh, maybe to mention on the base theme, um, we have here a field called mode and the mode sets how uh, the asset optimizer is working. And in this case, that's the default, it's inheriting its configuration from the site. And I think uh, if there is nothing set, it's, it's inheriting from a global place. So uh, usually the asset optimizer is switched on, which would minify uh, all the style files or J JavaScript files that you add. In our case, I want to turn it off for now um, to not having it minified for now um, so that we just have the exact same CSS uh, in our um, solution um, or on our HTML page, and we can turn it on, on later um, just to see if this makes any difference and still works. So let's add the base theme to our site as site theme. Sorry. So this is our site theme. And we're going to select our base theme, which is the icons. Just double click. Here we go. Save the site theme. And um, yeah, let's see what has changed so far. So at least we have icons displayed, but it's always the same because it was statically uh, added to our script and templates. So let's adjust those to take the data actually from the data sources. So we don't need that one. Let's start with the services.json. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is obviously exchanging all the parts that we have in there. And uh, we are starting off to put in some script and code, which is um, Uh, starting with the curly brackets, and then um, we want to use the I service. Uh, so just to repeat, we are here in a loop and we are accessing our services that are teasered uh, through the services field, um, and we are storing it in the I service. So this is our current item that we are exploring. And um, the, so the, it's just a random name that we chose here. and so each service is now, or each service detail page is now represented by the I service um, item or object. Um, and now we want to explore the color field. And also the color, if you remember, is a drop down. So it references again another item. So this way we would follow those items uh, using the target extension and um, in the color item we have a class name and we don't want to have it editable like a like a text field that or I mean we would have loved to have it edit, editable directly but this would mess up a little bit in our experience editor because it would show it as a single line text field uh, when editing and we want to actually have it styled directly like that so that's why we use the extension raw. So um, that's the first one. And um, the other thing that we have to do, obviously, is, yeah, you might want to add another curly braces to the beginning and end of that. You're completely it's right. Perfect. Thanks. It's always two. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Um, so then the second thing here is the SVG part. So let me take this off for now and following basically the same pattern. Let me just copy it from here. And obviously we don't want to have the color, but we want to have the background. Target and then it's not the class name, but it's the oh, it's it is actually the no, it's the SVG code field SVG. This one and then let's copy it one more time. 
to this class that we need to exchange, which represents the actual icon. So then it's not the background, but obviously the icon target, and then again, the class name. Yeah, maybe just one small tip for people who are trying to do these sorts of things with Scriven. If you are using field names, then try to use field names without a space in it. It makes it a lot more easier to use those values in, in your Scriven files, right? Yes, and you can improve then still the authoring UX by providing display names for the fields itself. Uh, but yeah, the, the actual field names, the, the technical ones, should be the ones uh, without blanks. That makes it much easier. Good point. So that's the first one. Let's also directly do the other one. Um, so in here we have named, uh, we are again iterating through a features field. So again, we have the iClient uh, as our reference and we need to uh, exchange the icon represented by this class here and then also the color. So doing it this time with two curly brackets and then it would be i client dot and it's the icon field and we want to have again the referenced field so that's why we choose the target extension and we use then the field name class name and the extension raw and same we do for the color so this remains but this one gets exchanged so it's i client color target and again uh, this is called the field is called hex color value there we go um, I've started the SXA watcher before, so you see that all my Scriven changes that I saved in between are successfully imported to Sitecore. So let's now uh, reload our page and see what changes. And you can see we have different shapes, we have different icons which are coming from the data source. And also here we, we have now the different icons that have been preset before. Cool. So you see that, well, by doing minimal amount of effort, you can definitely make it a lot more editable for your users. So users are now able to choose their own icons, choose their own background colors, um, by go to the fields in the in the color editor and then selecting those. Um, so it will be beneficial to add things like edit frames as we have done before around these components so that they can also do it within the experience editor. But I think Sebastian, you also had another option, right? Where people could still do this within the experience editor without uh, adding edit frames. Yes, so definitely we've shown edit frames and, and experience buttons in the last tutorial. Um, so it would definitely make sense to add them here as well. Uh, however, there's something inbuilt already, uh, which Mark is uh, referring to. So for example, as our, um, our teasering for this component comes from a page, we can select this page that contains the teasering information thing, uh, which is uh, this guy here. Um, so let's move to that page and you can see it's an empty page. But in the Experience Accelerator tab, you find here um, some buttons that um, gives you access to certain fields of your page already. So you have all the CEO, uh, uh, SEO related fields under this button to be maintainable, all the uh, social sharing, so open graph text and stuff like that. Uh, uh, under this button, you can tag your pages, um, but you also have this button called other. And other is everything other than the other three. So if we click on this one, uh, we find here all the fields available on our page template that are not represented by the other three buttons. So if we scroll down here, we find also our teaser appearance. So this way, if we see the workflow of creating content, um, usually I think an author creates all the content for the page and then fills in maybe directly the SEO information and the social sharing information and can directly decide how this is going to be teasered and selecting then the right icon from the list, uh, the right color and the right background. So this way there is already something in Experience Editor where you don't have to do anything but definitely makes sense to also offer an experience editor button or an edit frames um, for each um, teaser so that you can also maintain it directly from the, the teasering location. So from here, um, 
this way you serve uh, both kind of workflows and um, yeah, I think it helps the editor to to um, design the pages and, and put the data on it. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for showing that.